I'd like to introduce Jade Rucker. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Supreme Court of Indiana is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon, welcome. And thank you, Bailiff Jade Rucker. We appreciate you bringing us in. Um, we're pleased to be here to celebrate Justice Rucker's career. And what a career. Thank you, Honor again, the Honor Bailiff's got us going, but we also have a number of his nieces and nephews who will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Could you come forward? Aiden, AJ, and Addie. just a hard act to follow. Well done. <laughs> Very well done. Well, Justice David, Justice Massa, and I join in welcoming Justice Rucker's family, his wife, Dr. Denise Rucker, um, and he will be making other introductions. There is a lot of Rucker family here, correct? And also, because of space constraints, we could not get all the Rucker family in here, so we are live webcasting that. this. Uh, so, so, gentlemen, can we all wave to the camera for his family members? Um, <laughs> that are out there. Normally, Justice Slaughter would be seated at my left. He was not able to be here today. He asked me to convey his appreciation to Justice Rucker as a jurist and a public servant. He calls him the E.F. Hutton of our court. When he talks, people listen. I'd like to also thank Governor Holcomb for joining us today, and we'll hear from him in a few moments. I promised Justice Rucker that we'd sort of follow in his footsteps today and try to be brief, and, and I don't mean brief by federal court standards, Judge Pratt and Judge Baker. <laughs> <laughs> he served with 31 different appellate judges, and many of them are here today. So please hold your applause. I'm going to go through the list of those he served with and those he has served in the past with and those he'll be serving in the future with as a senior judge. So from the Supreme Court, Justice Rucker served with Ted Bohm, Brent Dixon, Randall Shepard, as well as he replaced Myra Selby, who joins us. He served with seven current Court of Appeals judges, including John Baker, Edward Nadrum, Jr., Patricia Riley, Jim Kirsch, Mark Bailey, Melissa May, and Margaret Robb. He also served with former Court of Appeals judges that join us, Linda Cheesham, Carr Darden, Ezra Freelander, William Gerard, and John Sharpneck. On a Monday, actually sat a week from this Saturday, he'll become a senior judge in the Court of Appeals, and he will soon serve with a number of our current Court of Appeals judges, Chief Judge Nancy Vedic, Judge Paul Mathias, Michael Barnes, Terry Crone, Kael Bradford, Elaine Brown, Rudolph Pyle, and Robert Altice. 
Justice Rucker, a big part of your legacy is all of these judges that you've served with, you have made us all better. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize a few other colleagues we have in attendance. We have our Chief Administrative Officer, Mary Willis, along with many of our court directors and staff. We have his longtime associate here, Pam Cody. We appreciate it, Pam, to have you here in all your years with Justice Rucker. Tax Court Judge Martha Blood Wentworth and former Tax Court Judge Tom Fisher. Um, Lake County Prosecutor Bernard Carter, Valparaiso Law School Dean Andrew Lyon, Federal Court Judges Tanya Walton Pratt and Tim Baker, and hardworking members of the Judicial Nominating Commission that could join us today. We have John Feitner, Molly Kitchell, Lynette Long, Rudy Ockham III, and James Young. We have many trial court judges here as well, including the three nominees for the 110th position. We thank them, and Governor, you've got a tough task ahead of you. We have Vicki Carmichael, Jeffrey Goff, and Matt Kincaid. So at this point, I'd like to invite our Governor, Eric Holcomb, up to the podium. We'd like to thank Justice Rucker on behalf of the entire state of Indiana, and we invite you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chief Justice, for giving me just a couple of minutes to honor Justice Rucker this afternoon. Clearly, this is a day of mixed emotions. On one hand, it is an honor to re recognize the enormous legacy Justice Rucker leaves, not just to the courts, but to the entire state of Indiana. And on the other hand, we hate to see him turn to this next chapter in his life. But Justice, your retirement is well-deserved. And I know, I understand you're looking forward to it. <laughs> and I know also that the walls of your office or study at home are already adorned with so many well-deserved awards and accolades. But I'd like to add uh, just one more to that distinguished collection, the state's highest honor, the Sagamore of the Wabash. The Sagamore is, as you know, only given to those of deep wisdom who counsel the governors, or in your case, governors, plural, who give of your talents to the betterment or the enrichment of our state. Someone who is a trailblazer, and you define that. And Justice Rucker, I can think of few others that are in your class and who will leave such a legacy for so many others, not just to aspire to, but to seek to follow. Therefore, it is my high honor to name you a Sagamore of the Wabash. And while I know you'll be enjoying your retirement, just I say it here before so many others, just a fair warning, Indiana will still be calling on you from time to time <laughs> for that wisdom and counsel. Although I get it, I understand you may not pick up the phone immediately, <laughs> but the calls will be coming. Thank you, sir, for all you've done for our state and your nation, and most importantly, our people. Thank Congratulations you, on your you. Get back there for you. <laughs> Thank you, Governor Holcomb. We're, uh, we're kind of running out of time, so if you're going to change your mind, now's the time to do this. <laughs> 
say it ain't, say it isn't so. Robert Kennedy once said, some men see the world as it is and say, why? I see the world as it could be and say, why not? I think you and Robert Kennedy have a lot in common, Justice Rucker. The Indiana Supreme Court will never be the same come Saturday morning, the day that you officially retire. However, the Indiana Supreme Court will continue to serve the people of the state of Indiana and safeguard the Constitution of the state of Indiana and the Constitution of the United States of America, provided the four of us, and of course 110, do the following. We're going to have to work a little harder. We're going to have to read a little more. We're going to have to research a little deeper. We're going to have to think a little longer. We're going to have to write a little shorter sentences. <laughs> You see, not having Justice Rucker on the court or being Ruckerless, we're going to have to do we're going to have to do more to ensure that his perspective is not lost. We will be Justice Rucker less, but we don't want to be rudderless. We must ensure that justice in Indiana applies to every citizen under every circumstance. Justice Rucker has sort of at times, maybe most times, been our collective court conscience. We pledge to you and the people of Indiana that we will not disappoint you. In fact, if I have to get a new wristband and replace this one with uh, WWJRS, what would Justice Rucker say? <laughs> I'll do that if that's necessary. We'll miss you, partner. You've been a dear friend to all of us, especially to me and a brother in arms. We are bonded forever, service on this court and service in the uniform of the United States military. You've been a public servant virtually your entire life. You've lived your vocation, your calling, that being the law. You've been a loyal servant of God, and you have been a guardian of the rule of law. It just can't get any better than that, can it? <laughs> you have given your professional life to something bigger than yourself. You've been successful beyond imagination because you've made a difference in each and every day that you've served this court. As Thurgood Marshall observed, certain people have a way of saying things that shake us at the core. He must have had you in mind, Justice Rucker. But the sadness of this day is because of our own selfishness in losing you. But Indiana's not losing you because you'll soon be a senior judge on the Court of Appeals. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> you'll now be able to cite the opinions from the Court of Appeals that you wrote <laughs> and cite the opinions of the Indiana Supreme Court that you wrote. In fact, you may just be able to do it all yourself. <laughs> so to our best friend, we wish you well in the Court of Appeals. Relax, play more golf. Lord knows you need the practice. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Some things change, some things never change. The court is changing. That's not unusual the last seven years. I'm beginning to take it personally. But, uh, <laughs> thank you for your service to this nation and to the people of the state of Indiana, Justice Rucker. Uh, as been said previously, uh, we are all better because of you. Thank you, my friend. It's not surprising that we have several groups here today to pay honor and respect to Justice Rucker, including the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs, the Indiana Judges Association, and the Indiana State Bar Association, and the National Bar Association. National Bar Association and others will be given an opportunity to speak. Justice Rucker is a decorated combat veteran who served in Vietnam and received the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star. The Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs is here to give their appreciation. I welcome Mr. Mike Hamm, U.S. Army 5th Special Forces, and Lauren Minix, United States Marine Corps. Come forward and make your presentation. It's our pleasure to be here for Justice Rucker. Uh, approximately 15 years ago, you probably won't remember this, I would be surprised if you do. Uh, I was playing golf, or I was uh, at some golf course. <laughs> Two 
with my uh, daughter and son-in-law. We had a threesome. And there was a, uh, uh, the starter came to us and said, would you mind adding a fourth to your, to your team? And I said, no, that would be fine. A fine looking gentleman stepped up and proceeded to play with us for the next 18 holes. I didn't find out until about the ninth hole he introduced himself uh, by name and I didn't find out until probably the ninth or tenth hole that uh, when I asked what he did for a living, he told me I'm a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> well, that was kind of, I, I'm not sure where my game went from there. <laughs> it was never good to start with. But I do know that now that you're retiring, I'm assuming that you're gonna be out there playing more golf. Yeah, Would you add course. me to your fourth sometime? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I won't talk about your game. Please. Better than <laughs> well, the reason I'm here is I got a, an email uh, back at the 1st of April from, a, uh, from the 50th commemorative uh, group from a uh, Major General James Jackson, retired. He's the director of the uh, uh, Vietnam War Commemoration in the Pentagon, et cetera, and for the 50th commemoration. And they said, we read an article in the Stars and Stripes back in April, or actually it was the end of March, and you spoke at uh, Purdue Northwest, I believe. And uh, that was published in the Stars and Stripes and they read it. And they said, we don't want to give you this lapel pin the commemorative lapel pen by mail, we want to present it to you. And that's what I'm here for, uh, for today is because uh, we are both Vietnam veterans, we appreciate your service, and from a grateful nation, we appreciate your service too. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home, brother. Thank you. By Friday, Justice Rucker will have served 9,628 days on the bench. The Indiana Judges Association is here to honor that distinguished service. Judge John Parrott, please step forward. The courtroom is yours, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm actually here wearing three hats today. First on behalf of the Indiana Judges Association, I want to express our deep appreciation and gratitude for the many, many years of service uh, that you have made to the state of Indiana, to the judiciary, uh, someone to look up to, someone to emulate, someone to try to follow, um, a very difficult thing for all of us to do. And on behalf of the Indiana Judges Association, I'm proud to say that we are giving a gift uh, in your honor to Freetown Village, an organization uh, that celebrates the African-American history and the culture of African-Americans in the state of Indiana. And we're very happy to do that. Thank you so much. The second reason I'm here is that I'm chief judge of the Lake Superior Court. And Bob Rucker, as you all know, hails from Northwest Indiana, particularly and specifically from Lake County. And I have to tell you that all of the judges up there were very disappointed and, and heartbroken almost that you're uh, at your retirement. But we understand uh, that this is a time for you to enjoy your family and, and your golf game and all of the other things that you have to do in your life. And I just wanted to convey to you on behalf of the entire Lake County Judiciary how much you were looked up to and how much you were admired and how much you are respected for all that you have done to elevate the judiciary in Indiana. The third reason I'm here is more of a personal uh, comments. Bob Rucker and I both grew up in Gary. 
We were both educated in the Gary Public Schools. He's long honored me by calling me his friend. The only thing that I have ever held against him was the fact that he went to Gary Roosevelt and I went to Gary Horstman. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, he's always been a friend and a colleague of mine. We both went to Indiana University Northwest. He, I, I actually was a little bit ahead of him because his service or his educational uh, experience was interrupted by the Vietnam War. We both went to Valparaiso University, and there are some professors here uh, of both of ours. Uh, I saw Bruce Berner and Rosalie Levinson earlier. Um, so I have known this man for a long time, and it was 19 years ago, uh, 18 years ago, that I was in this very room uh, on the very auspicious occasion of his swearing in as a, as a justice of the Indiana Supreme Court. And I want you all to know that with me personally, with the Lake County Judiciary, and I know all of the people in Indiana, you will be missed, and we wish you well during your retirement. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Justice Rucker, the Indiana State Bar Association is uh, well represented in this room today, and we are honored to have President-elect Ms. Andy Metzl. Good afternoon to all of you, and particularly Justice Rucker. Um, it is the mission of the Indiana State Bar Association to improve the administration of justice, and also to promote the public understanding of the legal system. As a member of the Indiana State Bar and of the Bar in general of the state of Indiana, you have more than fulfilled your responsibilities. Uh, you have adhered to the highest standards of ethics and professionalism. You have done so while, all, while always holding steady to your values, which have been obvious to us. You've exercised sound discretion, and you've enriched the integrity and the character of this court every day. So on behalf of the Indiana State Bar Association, it is my sincerest pleasure to give you this gesture of our gratitude. It's a rendering of the interior of this court, which is something I'm sure you do not need to be reminded of. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to know on behalf of all of the members of the bar, we're grateful for your service to the public, to our profession, and that we will certainly never forget you. Thank you. Justice Rucker has a nationwide reputation, and we are honored and so happy to have all the way from Missouri, a Missouri Judicial Officer, Anna Marie Clark, here representing the National Bar Association. Judge? May it please the court. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Anne Marie Clark from St. Louis, Missouri, and I am chair elect of the National Bar Judicial Council. I'm here this afternoon representing the chair of the Judicial Council, Just, Judge Johnny Hardwick of um, Alabama, who was not able to be here. But today in the state of Missouri is Truman's birthday. And it was a holiday, and I was very happy to be able to be here to celebrate the retirement of my friend. As you know, Justice Rucker is a past chair of the National Bar Judicial Council, and the National Bar Association and the members of the Judicial Council are very happy to celebrate in his retirement. If there are members of the National Bar Association or of the Judicial Council, would you please stand? I know there are a few others. Thank you. For the occasion of just 
Justice Rutgers Retirement, we have a, uh, I'm pleased to present this tribute. Uh, I will not read all of the four, uh, the wherefore, wherefore clauses, whereas clauses, but um, Justice Rucker was the 39th chair of the Judicial Council of the National Bar Association serving from 2009 to 2010 when he traveled across the United States on behalf of the Judicial Council seeking to promote the mission and visibility of the council, often wearing his colorful African attire. <laughs> Whereas on the occasion of the vote to rename the Lake County Courthouse in Gary, Indiana after Justice Rucker, the County Court Commissioner Roosevelt Allen said the vote was in recognition of the distinguished exemplary career of Justice Rucker. Black male role models such as President Obama and Justice Robert Rucker will inspire countless numbers of black males, both nationally and within our community, to aspire to greatness and help our nation to remain the preeminent country in the world. Therefore, be it resolved that Justice Rucker's lifelong service, dedication, and commitment to the state of Indiana, to his community, and to the legal profession be recognized and honored on the occasion of his retirement from the Supreme Court. Be it further resolved that we, the members of the National Bar Association Judicial Council, do hereby extend to Justice Robert D. Rucker our sincere and grateful appreciation for his dedicated service to the state of Indiana, our congratulations on his well-earned retirement, and best wishes to him and his family for continued success, happiness, and good health in the years to come. It is so written and acknowledged this eighth day of May 2017. Uh, Let it be placed in the archive, signed by Johnny Hardwick, Chair of the Judicial Council of the National Bar Association. Thank you. sat in this chair six days ago hearing oral arguments, the Chief Justice reminded the lawyers for the parties that they had the privilege of participating in Justice Rucker's final day of arguments as a member of this court. Professor Schum from the IU McKinney Law School was at the podium about to start on his client's behalf. When he heard the Chief's reminder, without hesitation or contemplation, he said, thank you, Justice Rucker, for your insight, your wisdom, your empathy and humanity. Could there have been a more succinct, accurate, and appropriate tribute? Insight, wisdom, empathy, and humanity. Robert Rucker exudes these attributes, which is why we will miss him so much. To these four, I would add elegance and humility. I don't know that I have met a person in my life with greater presence or moral authority built on an extraordinary life, well lived. I wish every person in this room could have been with us two months ago. We held oral argument at Gary Roosevelt High School. It was a humbling experience for a man in late middle age raised in suburban comfort. In the toughest of circumstances, the kids we encountered at Roosevelt could not have been more impressive. Particularly so were the cadets of their junior ROTC program, the same program that produced Justice Rucker in 1964. They surrounded him like a rock star and posed for pictures knowing they were in the presence of self-made royalty and seeing the possibilities for their own lives that he has helped create. As I looked on, a reporter from the Chicago Tribune asked me for my thoughts, and like Professor Schum, they came quickly. I told him that at a time when we have just concluded observing our state's bicentennial, it is worth noting that Robert Rucker is one of the great figures in the history of our state, and that is no overstatement. When the next big anniversary comes around and historians ask who were the men and women in and out of public life who left their mark on Indiana, they'll say names like Harrison, Morton, Lilly, Polly Strong, Antoinette Dock and Leach, Madam Walker, 
Tony Holman, Oscar Robertson, by Bradamus, Halleck, Hatcher, Luger, Shepard, Daniels, and yes, Rucker, for the trails he blazed and the work he produced. I am quite certain that I will never again serve with someone whose name is already on a public courthouse. <laughs> which speaks to my point, leaving a legacy there in Lake, Lake County that will outlive us all. Finally, there's another thing I'll miss about Justice Rucker, that delightful aromatic fragrance of pipe tobacco <laughs> that would occasionally seep into the hallway outside his chambers. Every time I walked by and experienced that, I chuckled to myself, not only at the sensory pleasure, but at its mischievously defiant assertion of separation of powers. <laughs> a constitutional doctrine in which I believe as strongly as I believe in gravity. No legislative committee or executive branch busybody is going to tell a judicial officer that he can't do that in his own chambers. <laughs> so there, it almost made me want to start smoking in an act of judicial solidarity. <laughs> Justice Rucker, we will miss you, sir, more than mere words can convey, and I thank you for the honor and privilege of being your colleague these past five years. Godspeed, Mr. Justice. Thank you so much. As we've mentioned, Justice Rucker served with 23 colleagues on the Court of Appeals and eight justices from the Supreme Court. Until Justice Bohm's retirement in 2010, for 11 years, Justice Rucker was the most junior justice on the Supreme Court. His longtime colleagues, former Chief Justices Brent Dixon and Randall Shepard, are here to say a few words. Chief Justice Dixon. Thank you, Chief Justice Rush, for inviting me to say a few words. <clears throat> Justice Rucker and I served together on this court for over 16 years. Not only have we developed a warm friendship, but as many of you know, the two of us have been the justices most often aligned in voting on the court's, of opinion, on the court's opinions through the years. Today, we are all here expressing our gratitude to a man of towering integrity, intellect, wisdom, and respect. You know, everything about Robert Rucker seems to display his attitude of respect. He has respected the rule of law with his meticulous reasoning and his opinions, consistently respecting precedent and even if he personally disagreed with it. He has displayed respect for the judicial system and the institution of the Indiana Supreme Court, not only in his opinions, but also in his wise and prudent comments during our weekly conferences, and even in his consistently dignified, or as Justice Massa said, elegant attire, often including cufflinks at conference. <laughs> he has shown unwavering respect for his colleagues, his fellow men, and in his actions and in his words, whether in the State House, in meetings and social interactions, on the golf course, or traveling throughout the state. You know, I don't recall any time that Bob Rucker ever said a disparaging word about anyone. When you are with Robert Rucker, kindness and grace abound. His 15 years of private law practice in Lake County, being a people lawyer, enabled him to appreciate the challenges and the struggles of everyday Hoosiers. The judgment and wisdom he developed have been enormously valuable to the court and to Indiana's judiciary. Those of us privileged to work with him have observed firsthand his basic common sense, his keen passion for equality and for justice with mercy. I am honored to join everyone here in expressing our profound ad admiration and immense gratitude to Justice Rucker for his 16 and a half years on the Indiana Supreme Court, plus eight years that he served on the Court of Appeals. That's over 24 years of appellate judicial experience to Indiana citizens. 
We also recognize his wife, Denise, for her service as an officer at the State Assembly Club. Robert, I know that you have much on your retirement plate. Senior judging for the Court of Appeals, golfing, bass fishing, ballroom dancing, wine making, <laughs> and surely some relaxing pipe smoking. But I hope you don't forget your promise to get out your old upright string bass and join me for some jazz jam sessions. Absolutely. Jen and I wish you and Denise much happiness and fulfillment in what lies ahead. Thank you, Justice Robert D. Rucker. And for all of us who have been privileged to work with you, I say, well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> gives me a chance to say something that I almost never had the chance to say. May it please the court. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to say that in years. Um, uh, I, I want to begin by uh, uh, saying thank you and uh, com commending uh, Governor Holcomb for deciding to uh, honor you with uh, the state's highest uh, Sagamore, the Wabash. And to tell you something about uh, being a Sagamore um, that you might not know. Uh, it, it, it isn't just Indiana's highest honor. It's, a, it's an honor that, uh, in, in national terms, uh, means a lot. Uh, I learned this from Governor Orr. He used to say that being a Sagamore of the Wabash was much better than being a Kentucky colonel. <laughs> uh, because, there were, because there were no meetings and no dues. And, uh, it was a, it's a, step, a step in the right direction. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to mention. Uh, I want to mention just two. Uh, offer just two thoughts about um, uh, Justice Rucker among the wonderful and, and uh, verifiable claims that have been made this morning. Uh, one is a uh, story that, uh, as far as I know, has never been shared outside the conference room. And uh, if you want to uh, send me a subpoena after we're done, uh, <laughs> I don't think I have. Uh, but you'll, most people here will know that in the, uh, when the court comes back out of the, con out of the uh, courtroom having heard oral argument and gathers around the conference table, uh, that uh, the practice, long standing as long as uh, uh, anyone uh, I've ever known could remember, was that the members of the court would, of course, take a preliminary vote on the, how the case that they'd heard this morning would turn out. And the vote was always in reverse order of seniority, so that the newest member of the court would, uh, would always vote first, and then the next newest, and so on, and the chief uh, uh, would always vote last. Well, um, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, Justice Rucker was part of an 11-year uh, period in which there was no change. It was, I think, uh, Justice Sullivan would know for sure, but I think the longest time since the 1851 Constitution, that the court has uh, stayed the same. Um, and, uh, and, and, and finally, it, it, it came the day when, uh, when uh, Steve David showed up for his first uh, argument here in this room. We then uh, retired, and uh, um, according to my notebook of uh, decisions, that was October the 20th, 2010. Uh, and the case was Martinez versus State, it had to do with uh, Miranda warnings. So the five of us, uh, of course, uh, uh, get our materials together and get ready to cast our, our votes in this case. And one of the chief's jobs is to say, well, you know, we're, now what are the votes in Martinez? You know, you call the case and you turn around. And, and um, uh, so I looked over to my left. And, and Justice Rucker said, my vote is to deny, and the reason is that there's not really a problem, Ho, oh, there's a little unclear about the record. And of course, Justice David was sitting there kind of looking around. <laughs> but the 
Francis Rucker had voted first for 11 years and, and didn't notice that Steve David now sat <laughs> in the first chair. Um, that happened twice, by the way. The second time around, uh, Justice David used one of those old lines. He looked up after. He didn't, of course, interrupt Justice Rucker's uh, casting his vote, but he did look up at the rest of us and said, so what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> did I get this right? I think I got it right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, um, my, my friend Brent Dixon has used the word alignment. And um, I want to say a word about alignment. You could open the newspaper um, most days in this country and read about alignments, for example, at the US Supreme Court. Who are the people who tend to vote together and who are the people who don't, who vote together and don't vote on the opposite side? Who are the liberal justices and the conservative justices? And, and um, it is part of why the recent confirmation uh, was such a struggle because it had to do with the balance. That doesn't happen in this room or in the conference room and hasn't happened for a long time. The, the last um, report by the Indiana Law Review about um, cases in this court, in, in the last report was 2015. Uh, cases in this court decided by three to two votes of the 80 or so cases that were decided that year by the Indiana Supreme Court, only 12 were three to twos. And there were altogether nine different combinations of, uh, of three. You, you, didn't, you didn't go into that room and find that the people who were report, appointed by Republican governors voted one way and the people who were voted by appointed by Democratic governors or the other way. It simply didn't happen. It's demonstrable that this has been a place uh, where people listen to each other. They think along with each other. They listen to stuff they haven't thought about yet and evaluate it. And it's very ordinary for people to change their votes in the middle of that conversation. And I suggest to you that that's exactly what people hope would happen in the highest court of a state. And I can tell you, not only from, from this notebook, but from the other seven or eight notebooks that came from those 11 years, that Bob Rucker was crucial to maintaining and building that kind of thoughtful collaboration. For one thing, that made it a job that was much more pleasant, more fulfilling than it would be under any other circumstance. But it did something else. It does something else. It helps six and a half million people live lives building a state which is safer and more prosperous and more decent than it would be without it. And Bob Rucker was at the core of making that happen, of building the rule of law, and making Indiana a wonderful place to live. Thank you for those of us who served with you, and thank you for what you've done for those six and a half million people, my friend. Bon As justices on this court, we have the opportunity to work with any number of bright law clerks through the years. These lawyers typically spend a couple of years with us in the office, but they always remain a part of the court family. I, I was a law clerk myself to, uh, to Chief Justice Shepard and can attest to the value of the experience. Justice Rucker has had 38 law clerks over the years, and many of them are here today, including his first clerk, who I call on now, Wayne Harris.
Good afternoon. It's truly an honor to pay tribute to Justice Robert D. Rucker. I had the honor of serving as his first judicial law clerk back at the beginning of the Fifth District Court of Appeals back in 1991. I have many great uh, experiences from those days, and I just want to reflect upon a few for a few moments. I once asked Justice Rucker, what is the key to making a good, uh, a good presentation to the court? And, he, and quoting from FDR, he said, be sincere, be brief, and be seated. <laughs> As always, I intend to follow his advice. <laughs> I remember Justice Rucker filled his chamber with enthusiasm for the law. He is a meticulous, dedicated, he, he is meticulously dedicated to the study of the law. His dedication and hard work ethic are contagious. He instilled his wisdom, his intellect, his insights into all of his law clerks. We are thankful to him for being a role model of judicial and legal leadership. Then there is the personal side of Justice Rucker. He is a man who approaches all aspects of his life with enthusiasm. He is a man who is humble, thoughtful, and caring. He has a quick wit and a great sense of humor. He is an outdoorsman, and I remember learning the fine art of fly fishing from him. For me and his other law clerks, he is also not just a jurist, not just a boss, but a mentor, advisor, father figure, and friend. My time in Justice Rucker's chambers helped build the foundation for my legal career. I'm certain that his other law clerks will say the same. The success we have had and enjoyed in part is due to the many lessons that we learned in his chambers. Today, it is our turn to say thank you Congratulations on your retirement. Best wishes for the future, and Godspeed. It's now my honor to call on current law clerk, Tracy Cosby. For the last five years, I've had the privilege of clerking in Justice Rucker's chambers. Unlike most people who are familiar with his work by way of reputation and written opinions, I've been one of the fortunate few who have had the opportunity to learn from him directly. Although I felt as if my initial interview didn't get off to a really good start, um, I have to be honest that once we started talking about jazz music, I had a really good feeling. <laughs> Who knew that my appreciation for John Coltrane would be my ticket to the Indiana Supreme Court? <laughs> Over the years, I have learned that Justice Rucker is a brilliant jurist and a humble man. Even though he routinely performs his own research and can do his own legal writing, he has always made me feel as if my contributions were valued and that he couldn't do it without me. And contrary to what any litigant that has argued before him might tell you, he really does have a great sense of humor. <laughs> Dr. Rucker, just to be clear, I have never seen him eat a Reese's Cup or a Kit Kat, but I have learned that having them in chambers at all times is a good thing to do. <laughs> Most importantly, I have learned that Justice Rucker is the epitome of someone who doesn't just talk the talk, but he walks the walk. He has forged a path that others might follow, and, and not by virtue of his own appointments and professional accomplishments, but as a result of his commitment to and perseverance in ensuring that the legal community mirrors the population that it serves. Justice Rucker exemplified what it means to promote inclusion in race and gender in the legal community long before the words diversity and inclusion made their way to the professional vernacular. He has consistently hired women and people of color to clerk in his chambers in full-time capacities. And in fact, um, during his time at the Court of Appeals, then Judge Rucker, along with colleagues who are here today, um, Judges Ezra Friedlander and Linda Cheesman, created 
a summer internship program for minority students, which the Court of Appeals went on to adopt and implement. That program was the early forerunner to the now popular ICLEO, the Indiana Conference on Legal Educational Opportunity that was created by then Chief uh, Randall Shepard and is currently being nurtured by our very own Chief Justice Rush. Justice Rucker's commitment to diversity has not been limited to his chambers. And as a justice, he has diversified our governing bodies with appointments to the Commission on Continuing Legal Education, the Board of Law Examiners, the Supreme Court Disciplinary Commission, the Courts Rule Committee, and the Judges and Lawyers Assistance Program. Under his leadership, the Lake County Judicial Nominating Commission um, the, sent nominees to two different governors that resulted in the appointments of African American and Latino attorneys to the Lake Superior Court. And it is well worth mentioning that Lake County currently boasts one of the most diverse benches of any county in our state. In 2009, he was rightfully recognized by the Indiana lawyer for his contributions to diversity and inclusion by being named as a judiciary finalist for the diversity and practice and ward. By ensuring fair representation of women and people of color at the highest levels of leadership in our profession, without seeking personal accolade or acknowledgement, Justice Rucker has made a significant impact on inclusion and access to justice for all Indiana citizens. Your Honor, if you would allow me to indulge in a, a youth colloquialism for a moment, you exemplify for all of us that it's not enough to talk the talk. You can't just talk about it, you've got to be about it. <laughs> Let's make no mistake, though, uh, Justice Rucker's contributions to our profession, um, they extend far beyond establishing a pipeline for inclusion for unrepresented members of our profession. In discussing um, his expectations for my work in his chambers early on, Justice Rucker explained that the law in Indiana is impacted by what three justices sitting around a conference table say that it is. That is an extraordinary power that can never be taken lightly. He expressed to me that he was not concerned with getting the work done quickly, but he was always concerned with getting it right. His love for the law and concern for the individuals that it impacts are undeniable. As a jurist, he has exemplified the competence with which we must discharge our professional responsibilities. And as a mentor, he has modeled the character with which they must be discharged. On a personal note, Your Honor, while I can never give back all that you have given to the state and to the profession, please know that I will pay it forward. <laughs> your contributions will forever be reflected in your written work. From your careful consideration of a father's parental rights, as addressed in INRI IA and VA, to your conscientious approach to reviewing sentences for juvenile offenders, such as those in Fuller versus State and Brown versus State, your steadfast pursuit of ensuring access to justice for all litigants, including those with limited English proficiency, such as the criminal defendant in Ponce versus State, and especially your contributions to Indiana jurisprudence, and in particular in addressing the review of appellate courts on lower decisions as decided in Engelmeyer. Your work has shaped our jurisprudence and will continue to be a guide for jurists and practitioners in the years ahead. In conclusion, I'm honored to make the following two presentations to you. One for public display and appreciation. The second will be for your personal reflection. First, in recognition of the approximately 1,250 majority opinions that you have written during your time at the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court, uh, we present to you today a bound collection of your majority opinions um, that will be here for all to enjoy. <laughs> and the second, Although we could never fully express our gratitude and appreciation to you for the time that we've spent in your chambers, 
On behalf of your law clerks, I present to you a bound collection of letters that we have written to you directly and our reflections, our thoughts, and our appreciation of our time in your chambers. This book is simply our way of saying thank you for your service to the community. Thank you for your contributions to the legal profession, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey. Thank you, Tracy. Well, Justice Rucker, I think, I think these people would like to hear from you right now, so the, the floor is all yours. Um, thank you, Chief Justice. This is absolutely amazing. And I'm so honored by the presence of so many of my friends at the bench, bar, the armed services community, members of my family, and I'll mention those momentarily. Your presence here today is inspiring uh, and heartwarming. I'm humbled and greatly appreciate the presentations, the accolades, and the congratulatory remarks. On more than one occasion, I had to kind of glance to my left and right. I said, are you talking about me? <laughs> Incredible. I really am awed. But, but, but let, let's not get too carried away. This is starting to, starting to sound like I'm being put out to pasture <laughs> and, and, and beyond. You can't get rid of me that easily. I'm not leaving this planet. I'm just making the transition in this life. So let's just keep things in perspective. Uh, before I begin my remarks, which I pledge will be brief, and, and that from a profession that calls the 50-page document brief, um, I pledge to be brief, but let me begin by expressing how pleased I am to see so many of my family members here today. You've been introduced to my wife, uh, Denise, uh, Dr. Denise, thank you very much, um, who has traveled with me on this near 25-year journey. My partner, my confidant, she's been a real trooper. And even though we have not talked about it much recently, this, this, this must be an exciting time for her. Uh, uh, th think about it. Um, Friday is my last day on the court. The next day, Saturday, is her birthday. And the following day is Mother's Day. Now, that's a triple win. <laughs> that's a triple win, or, or, or if you will, and recognition of this past weekend's running of the Kentucky Derby. I call this a triple crown. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's been very, she's been very reserved about it, but I, I, I expect that she may be a little bit excited. My oldest son, James Rodney Rucker, and his lovely wife, Lori, have traveled here from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, by way of Marietta to be with us today. My son, Fanon, uh, Rucker, uh, more properly, the Honorable Fanani Rucker, judge at the Hamilton City Court, <laughs> Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, and with him is his daughter, you've been introduced already, my granddaughter, and our honorary bailiff, the incomparable Jade Rucker, who will be a freshman this fall with IU Bloomington on a scholarship. Also traveling from Atlanta by way of Mar Marietta is my brother Eric Rucker and his lovely wife Deborah. Uh, we don't get together as often as we should, but I suspect that's about to change with all this free time on my hands. In addition, attending today is my brother, the Reverend Gregory Rucker. Some of my sisters are here as well are Lisa Rucker, Shana Edwards. Rovell Pollock, soon to be Dr. Pollock, if you will, and her husband, Travis, Natasha Gaskin, and her husband, Arius, and my loving stepmom, Arlisa Rucker Patterson, affectionately known as Miss Lisi. <laughs> and 
several of my nieces and nephews, some of whom uh, led us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And I also have some cousins and close friends that are just like family that are here. So, so let me do it this way. With the entire Rucker family, please stand. This is my foundation. This is the source of my strength to keep me grounded. I'm so blessed. Thank you for your love and support. Thank you. You've heard about the number of opinions that I have authored over the course of my judicial career. But the reality is none of that would have been possible without the research and writing and drafting and redrafting and just the hard work and diligence of a dedicated cadre of law clerks, a total of 38 over the years, some of whom are with us today. Would you stand, please, for those of you who are with us today, my law clerks? In fact, the volume of opinions is not just a volume. It's actually the Rucker Reporters that you will see over here, and it's something like about 12 volumes, uh, representing all the opinions that have been written uh, in both the Court of Appeals and Supreme Court. And I have dedicated those volumes to my law clerks and staff. And if I could, the introduction reads, and they're both the introduction at the first volume of the Court of Appeals opinions, the introduction to the first volume of the Supreme Court opinions, the Rucker Reporters, chronicling opinions written when I served as a member of the Indiana Supreme Court or the Court of Appeals are dedicated to my hardworking law clerks, interns, and staff, without whose assistance none of those opinions would have been possible. I owe you all a debt of gratitude. Thank you so much. All of you. Their names are listed um, and on the and inscribed in the volumes. And let me hasten to add the link holding everything together and ensuring a smooth running chambers has been my loyal and dedicated office administrator of over 20 years, Pamela Cody. Pamela Stanley. frequent questions that I get asked is, what are you going to do in retirement? And I often respond, the number one thing I'm going to do is nothing at all. <laughs> uh, I'll figure it out every morning after I get up. And that's basically true, but not the full story. Uh, number one, after number one is out of the way, then what? Well, for starters, as you've heard, I will be joining my former colleagues on the Court of Appeals as a senior judge. Uh, that will be something of a homecoming and a reunion, and I'm really looking forward to it. I also have a few other plans as well, including spending more time with family, more time fishing and golfing, and, and, and including uh, and working in my yard. Um, and I'm not ruling out returning to teaching as an adjunct professor at the IU McKinney School of Law. Having been afforded the opportunity to serve the people of the state of Indiana for more than a quarter of a century has been an honor beyond measure. I mean, how, how do you quantify something like that? It's been an exciting and humbling journey. And I think of those of you in the courtroom today, not only for, I thank you, not only for attending this ceremony and for the inspiring tribute, but for being a part, and perhaps unwittingly, but being a part of that journey as well. Our paths in life have crossed, and I'm a better person 
and a better jurist as a result. I've been tremendously influenced by your friendship, your guidance, your wise counsel, and I thank you so much. I am so blessed that our life paths cross. And I have enjoyed immeasurably serving with my colleagues on this court, both present and former colleagues. Your integrity, collegiality, and leadership have provided a constant source of inspiration and makes coming to work every day a labor of love. In fact, the ancient Chinese sage Confucius advised, quote, choose the job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, while on this journey, I've not worked in a very long time. Now, in fairness, in fairness, and to be sure, that journey hasn't been all fun and roses. Not all fun and roses. Rather, in the paraphrased words, in the paraphrased words of the songwriter, the Reverend Don Johnson, I had some good days. Some good days. Five, five old opinions are good days. <laughs> I've had some hills to climb. I wonder if I can get Justice David's vote on this. <laughs> and, in, and, and in truth, and I've had some weary days. Weary days. Why is nobody joining my brilliant descent? <laughs> Nice. I wonder if my 3-2 majority I had yesterday is going to hold up. <laughs> all of my good days. All of my good days. Outweigh my bad days. Outweigh my This has been a great journey. This has been a great, incredible journey. Thank you all so much for sharing portions of it with me. Be blessed and Godspeed to you. Thank you. Justice Rucker, are you ready for me to bring it on home? Bring it on home. All right. <laughs> to thank Justice Rucker for his long, faithful, and conscientious service, we, the court gave him a gift. So would our soon-to-be most senior justice, Justice David, do me the honors? If I can, I don't know. It's hard to do when you get old. <laughs> justice Rucker, on behalf of your friends, no, your family, we have uh, some special crystal for you. So if you want to stand, so if it breaks, it's on your watch. <laughs> they made me practice this. Chief. The, we inscribed it. It has the Indiana Supreme Court seal, and it says, Justice Robert D. Rucker, for your service to the people of Indiana, November 1999 to May 2017. You have been a true champion of justice.
Justice Rucker has an, an eye for the pretty, I have to say. Um, so many, just a few more comments. Many days I find myself in Justice Rucker's chambers. I kind of announce I'm coming, and I come. I've learned so much from this gentle giant of a man. My favorite of what I call Justice Ruckerisms, when we're sitting around the conference table, we're going through something tough, is sometimes justice is just us. <laughs> Love it. You may be retiring from the court, but your voice, your words, your wisdom that you so graciously and patiently shared with us will continue to be a voice that has a permanent place in my head as this court moves forward in the future. A while back, Justice Rucker shared with me the beautiful story of his robing ceremony, where the attendees during comments from former Valparaiso Law Dean Edward Gaffney sang, my country tis of thee, my country tis of thee. Needless to say, this room has not seen a lot of singing in the past, um, <laughs> but not today. Justice Rucker, we would like to have the final moments on this court marking your historic career on this bench and as it began, singing of liberty and freedom. As one final tribute, we've asked Heron High School Vice President of Academic and Choir Di 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 Director Jonathan Harris to bring his talented students for a performance of My Country Tis of Thee as a surprise to Justice Rucker. lovely choir and I'll sing the first verse of My Country Tizity as the last event in this tribute to Justice Record today. Could you please gavel us out? Okay. All rise. <laughs> <laughs> this coin is 
adjourned. <laughs>